uh, I would say it was basically hunger, hunger for learning um, and actually solidify my actual uh, understanding of what I knew already. Um, because since I was diving into more specific uh, kind of an incident response role, I wanted to help solidify the concepts and the knowledge they already have so I could feel like that belt and braces approach so I could feel more uh, confident while I was on, on the job, basically. Oh yeah, it, got, it has contributed uh, tremendously in terms of uh, being able to like get that um, position on incident response and being able to actually perform in the position. You know, one thing is to go in and kind of know something and try to do something. But when a real incident happens, uh, having the knowledge on what to do, what steps to take, uh, what not to do, because there's stuff you should not do either. Um, that's that's has been great. Uh, definitely the, the program helped me uh, drill down those concepts in my mind. So I was able to basically uh, use them whatever I need to. So it has contributed greatly in my career. Oh, it has definitely picked my interest to keep uh, diving more into incident handling and incident response. Uh, coming from a background of going broad in terms of knowledge of doing a little bit of different things. Uh, now that I get some more knowledge and I know how the, how all the incident handling process works. It has definitely uh, helped me focus and set me out on a path to try to keep going deeper and higher, exploring uh, incident handling, incident response, uh, everything that has to do with, with incidents. So it has definitely, definitely uh, influenced positive in a positive way for me to get deeper and get better in at incident handling. Well, I would say basically the the courseware and the labs were great because with the courseware you will get to know the theory behind it, the concepts, the, the standards, the laws, the regulations, and actual different uh, incident scenarios. Whereas with the labs, you get to apply that theoretical uh, knowledge that you gain from the courseware and put it to practice and actually see it in a real world experience. Uh, what would be like to pop, maybe respond to an incident or see the, the process being applied. So I really love the material, the actual material of the course and also the labs. I think uh, that combination was really, really, really good. It gives you a very uh, real world approach. Ah, sure. Uh, well, we get, sometimes we get, for example, uh, incidents related to leak credentials from users and uh, being able to respond to that uh, requires us to be pretty uh, diligent with it. Usually when we get an order of those, we try to, to, to go to it as fast as possible because, you know, the, um, the longer those credentials are out there exposed in the dark web, the more time the attackers have to find them and, and use them. So the faster you can actually uh, finish with that incident, the less likely you're going to get to, to be hacked, you know? But when those kind of incidents happens, having them, having the step on my mind, like incident handling step, uh, for example, I could say, let's say we get an alert. I get an alert from your user leak credentials. Uh, the first thing we do is I start going start to log in and start accessing, accessing the system that I'm probably going to need to do my investigation and to also uh, probably reset the users, uh, the user powers and block their signings. Then we try to go and analyze what happened, how this credential got leaked. Uh, it could be different reasons. Um, also, then we go, we contact the user, we explain them uh, what happened and that uh, we need uh, their help to possibly recall if they did something, they click something, they stole something, if they input their credentials somewhere, 
and also then we go we start looking analyzing uh if there's suspicious signings attempts or stuff like that so we go step by step like the uh preparation the gathering of the information the containment we try to contain it uh so we block the user from signing in we reset their password so even if an attacker got the credentials it wouldn't be able to log into our systems and then after that we go to the recovery phase where we reset the user's password the user sets a new password and if there's no signs of actual real compromise then usually the the user can keep uh go back to use their their account as normal and then we go to the basically the last step on the incident handling response which is the lessons learned so what can we learn from this what happened do we need to patch something do we need to fix something do we need to change a policy and uh that stuff having those steps on my mind really helps me know what to do next when an incident uh like this one uh, happens oh sure uh yes yes i have i have completed all the courses and all the certifications uh what i will say is most of the other courses and certifications out there in cybersecurity are very generic and very broad meaning they will teach you a little bit of everything a little bit of for example security engineering a little bit of incident response a little bit of threat intelligence a little bit of programming a little bit of attacks so they're very generic uh and they go very very broad as we know cybersecurity is a very big and broad topic that has a whole bunch of different areas but the ECIS program is different in terms of it will still give you the basics of cybersecurity you will still get to know and get value from the basics but it delves deeper and it dives dive deep into what is incident handling and response and for basically anyone looking to get better or trying to go into that uh role then it definitely will be helpful and one other point that i would like to make on this is that there aren't many incident handling and response programs or certifications out there so it's very difficult to find uh good quality training on this specific topic inside cybersecurity so that's why i mentioned it because it's probably one of the other reasons that i chose this program because there there aren't really many others comparing it to the industry uh of certifications that goes really deep into this this specific topic yeah well like basically like i said this question goes hand in hand with the prior one it is it would be very very beneficial for an individual looking to go in to develop into a SOC role or an incident response incident handler role because like i said this program goes very deep into it it goes specifically into that again it will lay the foundations of cybersecurity we cannot without the foundations we are lost we cannot do much so we always need the foundations and the ECIH program will give us the foundations but when it comes to those more specific roles that somebody will be doing something a little bit more specific and responding to incidents then it becomes very very relevant and it is very very beneficial for any individual seeking to go into a, like an incident response handling uh role definitely oh i think it, it aligns really well because incidents will always happen we will always have incidents as we can probably see in the news every day there is an uh, this company got breached y company got breached z company got breached so that's going to be happening and the ECIH program give us the tools and the methodologies to be able to respond to such incidents i would say that getting a breach or, or getting hacked it's one thing but how do you respond to that actual breach is another thing and a lot of damage can be minimized if we know how to respond appropriately and accordingly 
Uh, and that's where, that's where this ECIH program comes in. ECIH program goes through the actual guideline that already exists, like NIST uh, incident response framework that, is, that already exists. And having that knowledge and knowing that you're doing what the standard and what the industry is doing and what you're supposed to be doing can greatly make difference when you're responding to an incident. So I think it is very, very relevant to today's trend landscape and it's going to continue to be uh, because I don't see the incident incident handling or process changing drastically over the next couple of, of years. Uh, maybe we'll have a bit of changes, but still the basics are still going to be the same. So I think the ECIH program will still remain uh, relevant and valuable. Uh, sure. Uh, here in, the, in this question that makes me think about maybe some things that most people don't talk about because a lot of people tend to focus on technical skills. And while the ECIH gave me some technical skills that I didn't knew or gave me new, new tips and new tricks and new programs and new stuff that I didn't know. Also, more than that, it gave me the confidence uh, to actually feel um, adequate to perform this kind of job. In our line of work, it's very common to have something called the imposter syndrome. Again, most people don't talk about this, but basically this is that you feel like you don't know so much and like everybody else knows more than you. So you're being kind of like an imposter. When in reality, usually is that we almost know always like the same level. Uh, they may know a little bit more than you in one area, but you may know a little bit more than them in another area. So you're kind of even. Uh, but in our minds, we think that we're inadequate or that we're not prepared to deal with, with, with what this actual job requires us to do. And the ECIH program helped me to feel that, that more secure built approach, more confident in knowing that, Hey, I know this, I can do this. And confidence can go a long way, especially when you're inside of an incident. If you feel confidence, you feel calm, you feel collected, you can make better decisions. Therefore, those could make a big impact on, uh, on, on basically the decisions you make on an incident. And I will say the ECIH program, more than technical skills, gave me that, the other soft skills that actually you as, as a professional, you also need. Ah, sure. Well, I've been doing cyber security direct work for almost 10 years now. Uh, I started as most people, I started in IT. I didn't start it directly in like cybersecurity or infosec. Uh, and if I go way back when I was a little kid, this all started because of my, my dad. Uh, my dad was, and still is right. Uh, a computer technician. He works in, in, in IT. Uh, even though when he first started, that wasn't his main uh, job. He had another job and he was doing, he would do this on the side. And basically when we got the dot com boom, that everybody was having computers at their homes, internet was starting out to people. So, you know, th there was this kind of rush, like everybody wanted a computer, uh, a printer and be able to get connected, be able to be online. That's when my, my dad started. And since I was a little kid, I've always seen computers around the house because he would do this in, in my house, in our house. He will repair the computers. I will see the hardware parts. I will see him changing. I will see him installing operating systems. I would be, I would go with him to the store to pick up parts. I would go to him to clients' homes to uh, uh, give them service because they have problems with their computers. So all of that was feeding my my hunger on this and picking my interest i would have i would always have computers i remember going as far back as windows 95 um so i would always have computers then when time came that i decided what career what i wanted to pursue then i chose it i got my bachelor's and then i started working and like most IT pros, uh, I started at help desk and then climbed my way uh, from there. I became then a sysadmin. 
uh, and as with most small to medium sized companies, the IT department is not just it's not just divided into areas. So it's like I was a sysadmin, but I was still doing network admin stuff, cabling, user support, maintaining databases, maintaining the servers, like a little bit of everything and therefore security. So I started doing security, installing, installing firewalls, working with policies and procedures. And then I came all the way to become a supervisor of the whole IT department for a healthcare uh, area. So HIPAA was a big thing. It's, it's the main thing in the healthcare sector. So therefore security became even more critical and more important. And then that kept starting to get me more interest in focusing more on security. Therefore I started studying, reading, practicing, making my own labs at home, start analyzing, start doing all this kind of cybersecurity related stuff, starting pursuing certifications, courses, and before I knew it, I landed a full uh, cybersecurity focused job that I am currently at. So, so yeah, it's been uh, it's been a quite an interested, uh, great, rewarding journey. Oh yes, um, I've done I've done the essentials courses that you guys have. I think I I I guess I was one of the very first ones who did it uh, when it first came out. It's basically it's composed of three courses. It's, the, it's one from ethical hacking one digital forensics and another one for network defense. When I was getting those foundations, I uh, I took those courses and they're great. They're great for foundation. So they'll, they'll build you up and get you ready for your for your next step with a, with a solid, solid ground. So I took I took those courses from you guys and they really helped me like stepping stones to go above and beyond, you know, um, Network, network defense is all about the infrastructure and the policies to have it in place. Uh, digital forensics is more about the collecting the evidence when an incident or something goes bad and something happens, collecting and preserving that evidence and also uh, trailing back and trying to figure out what happened. And the uh, ethical hacking area is basically just trying to go in, trying to simulate what an attacker would do uh, to companies to strengthen their defenses and tell them, hey, I found this. This is something that an attacker might do. You should do this or you should patch this so the attacker cannot do it. So it's all to reinforce the security posture. So I did I did those courses and those really helped me get that foundational level. And also after that, then I did ECIH and hopefully I will do uh, more courses for Miss Console as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I would, I would definitely recommend it. And my key, my key reason would be for someone who is trying to get into or to reinforce the knowledge from an incident handling and response area. This will be definitely be helpful. Like, like I said previously, there are there aren't many certifications that focus on this critical aspect that we desperately need as we all know there's a shortage of cybersecurity professionals out there there's a, a lot of jobs that are unfulfilled uh, so we are in desperate need of cybersecurity professionals with the actual skills to perform at their job and i will definitely recommend it it will give you that great solid foundational knowledge that you need in incident handling response so therefore you can go in and execute at your job and even gain even more experience at job because nothing beats work experience, right? But a program like ECIS can really help and reinforce those, those areas for an individual who is looking to specifically go into this, into this role. Yeah, I'll definitely recommend it.